Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So I love Burson amplifiers. I've been a big fan of their Burson headphone amplifiers for a very long time. I even use them as pre-amplifiers because I love their pre-amplifier sound. Now, I wanted to see if they can make an amplifier. So I was just about to email them about making speaker amplifiers. What would it take for them to make something that sounds as good as their headphone amplifier with more or less the same sound signature because I love their sound signature. And just as I was about to send them the email, they emailed me and they said, hey Jay, we have a speaker amplifier slash a headphone amplifier that you may be interested in reviewing. And I said, of course, please send it right away. So I've had this here, I've been itching to talk about it because I can't talk about it before the release date. Now this is the Burson Funk. It pushes out 45 watts per channel and this is their first speaker amplifier. So considering that, how good is this Burson speaker amplifier? Does it live up to the Burson name and sound quality? And how does it fare with the competitors? We'll talk about all that in this video. So make sure to click that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss any of these videos. And let's get straight to it. Now before we go any further into the video, the Burson Funk is $544 all the way up to $744 depending on how you configure it. So it is a pretty affordable unit. Now Burson does have some promotion going on for a limited amount of time, so check the description. I think it's a pretty funky deal, but also a very generous deal for this type of unit. So let's start off with the speaker amplifier because that's what, I, what I'm mainly interested in. So the Burson speaker amplifier is 45 watts per channel in class AB. Now I don't know if that's in 4 ohms or 8 ohms. I would love for Burson to clarify that in the comment section if possible. Um, but it pushes out a good amount of power. And I say this because it's able to drive my KEF LS50 Metas on my desktop and that's very rare. Now they do claim that this is a high current design just like their headphone amplifier designs. and to be honest, I believe them. This little thing, don't be deceived by its size, can drive my KEF LS50 Metas without this subwoofer. Now when I do add this subwoofer, it's an entirely different story and that's why this is perhaps one of my favorite setups of all time for desktop scenarios. With the high pass filter on the subwoofer, with the dual concentric design on the KEF LS50 Metas, this is a fabulous sounding near field desktop setup. Now, the imaging is spectacular with multiple amplifiers I've used with this setup, but Burson by far is the best in my opinion in terms of imaging. This is a spectacular imaging amplifier in my opinion, and like I said, don't be deceived by its size, it punches hard. So a lot of bass authority is there, it's just very impactful, I enjoyed a lot of what this amplifier has to offer. So the bass is very impressive, it dips down low, it's able to control it, it punches hard, it does everything that I would love for an amplifier to do despite the size of this little integrated amplifier. It's spectacular. Now of course this is an integrated amplifier so don't get me wrong, this is not just a speaker amplifier, you can use the volume control in the front to adjust the volume. So this is a pre-amplifier slash amplifier, it's an integrated amplifier which means that you don't have to go buy a separate preamplifier. Now this is not all positive, it is also a miss because this only has inputs, it has no outputs. So this means that you cannot use the preamplifier on the unit, it can only take in from a source or a DAC of that sort via the analog in. 
So again, now this doesn't have DAX or anything like that. Now also that's a positive and a negative. For me, it's a high positive because this means that you can upgrade your DAX. Uh, it can change to different DAX to really fine tune the sound you want and improve the sound you want. But at the end of the day, this doesn't have a DAC. If you are looking for an all-in-one unit, this is not that. And last but not the least, it doesn't have an XLR input. So that's a little bit of a big miss for me. I would love to have an XLR input or output for studio monitors. Uh, if that was possible with this unit, this would be a fantastic, fantastic choice. But I guess if you were using this, you would want passive speakers and not power speakers anyways. So I would give them a pass on that one, but I would have loved to see at least an XLR input, whether it's actually balanced or not, it's a important connection to have in my opinion. The chassis design is same like every other Burson amplifier. The entire thing is metal and is used as a heat sink to dissipate heat. So although it gets a tad bit warm if I have it on all the time, it dissipates heat no problem and there's no damage to the unit. And of course in the front you have a quarter inch input for the headphone amplifier. You have a microphone input because if you're gaming or if you're just trying to talk to someone on Skype or something like that, then this is a big win. And there's two buttons in the front, one for gain adjustment and one for toggling back and forth between the speaker amplifier and the headphone amplifier, which I think is a wonderful design. Right now it's on the cool stand, which is also supposed to help with the heat dissipation because it is made of the same material as the chassis. But also this is a very cool way to um, help with your desktop real estate. Now I do have a large desk, but for most people out there with small desktop real estate, this is a godsend. This is taking up no room currently on my desktop at its current state. So if you're very limited for space on your rack or on your desk, then this is a perfect combination. Now as for the headphone amplifier, the headphone amplifier outputs three watts per channel in class A, and it can practically drive most headphones out there. Now the sound signature is very similar to the Burson Soloist that I reviewed. It's just a little bit less powerful. And I am just very impressed with the overall sound signature that this can provide both in the headphone section and the speaker amplifier section. Now more so on the speaker amplifier because it just sounds incredible for the size. It's very deceiving that this amplifier is so small. And most importantly, the Burson op amps. So Burson is famous for making really great op amps, but also making really great op amp interchangeable units like the Burson Soloist, uh, Burson Conductor 3X, all that is op amp interchangeable, which means that you can change the op amp to fine tune the sound you like. So mainly I was using the Vivid V6, but they also have the Classic, which I find to be a little bit more edgy sounding, a little bit more clear sounding. The Vivid is more smooth, but more refined on the top end. I think it's my favorite op amps of all time. Um, and I've tried quite a few out there, including Sparkles and stuff like that. Not specifically on this unit. I've only tried the Classic and the Vivid on this unit. Let's be clear about that. And with the upgraded op amps, the high frequency is extremely refined. It is smooth, it's not fatiguing, but I will not say it's bright at all. It is just perfect. It's smooth, but all the details are there. It's not rolled off. And in the beginning, you may think that the high frequency is a little bit more forgiving, a little bit rolled off, but it's not. Everything is there, it is extended, there's air, there's separation. There's a lot of space around the vocals and instruments and it does not sound crowded. The soundstage is large, the imaging is pinpoint, everything sounds very holographic and nice, almost like a tube amplifier, but just not because the bass is extremely tight and the imaging is extremely pinpoint for me to call it a tube amplifier. If it was, then it would be a very high end tube amplifier and the soundstage is not as holographic as a tube amplifier, it's not as vivid. So there's clear difference in that, but just almost like a tube amplifier, it has that softness, it has that analog sound that I love so much in amplifiers. So this is extremely perfect for a near field setup. Now I did try this in a speaker setup as well using a very expensive set of speakers that I'm testing right now. It's the Totem Metal version 2s and these do benefit from a high quality amplifier of course. And as you can imagine, it's very revealing of the components I use with it. 
And when I used the Burston amp, I was just blown away. This amplifier for this type of money, it just sounded just incredible. The bass impact, everything that I explained just came to life, but 10 times better. So I would say that even in stereo settings, these are able to drive some speakers, I would say 87 and up, depending on the room size, small to maybe even medium sized rooms. This should be just fine. So needless to say, it earns my recommendation, especially for desktop scenarios. It is one of the best amplifiers out there currently, and certainly I recommend it. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing and clicking that like button. And also consider joining our Patreon to support us to keep us independent and keep these honest video reviews going. Until next time.